I've uh, kind of had an idea. It's a project which interests me uh, really a lot. Um, my daughter, my eldest daughter, did um, a four-year degree course in Trinity, on, and uh, she alerted me to this uh, thing called the Royal Game of Ur. We're talking a game which was played uh, from, I don't know, 3,000 years ago to up until the 1950s. I think there was a Jewish community somewhere uh, around the world that was still playing it, maybe perhaps in the Middle East, was still playing this uh, game. It's also called the Game of 20 Squares. And, uh, or they found an actual board uh, uh, of the Royal Game of Rome. And then uh, a curator in the British Museum by the name of Finkel uh, discovered that they had clay tablets from Babylon uh, in their stores, in their archives, uh, which uh, gave the rules to this game. And I'm going to make a set for my daughter, uh, for her birthday, which is coming up fairly soon. So that I want to make this box, and I want to paint it, and I want to make it decorative and, uh, and something, something to be proud of, and that she will treasure, you know, hopefully, because I made it. This is what I have to work with, with all my tools kind of arranged in a, in a way that I can see them. So anyway, look, these are the, uh, the sides. I'm just sort of uh, not quite sure what wood that is. It looks like a kind of oak. I got that from woodworkers. So I'm just at the moment just making sure that it's all sort of exactly the same uh, height. I've got to turn this over, make plain the other sides just to make sure. I've got this uh, piece of plywood kindly given to me by a neighbor. And, and this will be for the tops uh, and bottom of the of the box. I've been building up uh, almost like in a Japanese lacquering way the paint on the on the box, just so that it's fairly robust layer of paint. That's right. This is what we've got so far. I need actually to paint the edges and slightly on the inside. That's going to be all green bays in there, or green sort of felt or something that I've got. A load of it, I'm gonna glue that into the inside of it, make it look a little bit plush. And I bought these tiny little uh, catches. And let's see how they are. Hopefully they'll, uh, I did measure them, so. Uh, then that will come over. I marked out the whole thing into the squares that are needed. And I marked it out with a PTT pen. A PTT pen with white ink. I the Castell thing there. And I marked in the areas that I want. And I want to have these in, in gold. So, and now you can see that I've actually started on this one here. Okay, so look, there we go. We've, I've actually started to put the, the gold leaf on here. So the whole thing, all those areas that are red, They'll be gold, and all the uh, the patterns, those little sort of squares, will be uh, filled in, detailed there. Um, I haven't decided what colours to do them yet, but they'll be pretty close to the uh, the original uh, anyway. Uh, so that's it. And when the whole thing is put together, it required some planning because uh, I had to plan out those sort of those in between areas because the, there's going to be hinges there, and it will hinge that way. And so we get a, a kind of a, a strip, a strip which is roughly the equivalent to the other strips. You see what I mean? Which is a centimetre. Each one is a centimetre. Okay, so that's how I'm doing so far. It's slow going, but I'll have to get a move on, won't I? Yeah, because this has to be done either before December the 2nd, which is my eldest daughter's birthday, or Christmas. At the rate it's going, it's probably going to be Christmas. Okay, so one of the problems that I had um, with this game was how to make the uh, the tokens. There are seven uh, tokens uh, in black and seven in white, and also the dice. And the dice is a bigger problem than the, the tokens. I could take a, a broom handle and just slice them to make uh, the tokens and paint them, whatever. But the the, the dice are tetrahedral. So um, what I've decided is, and it's kind of in line with the. Uh, the Sumerian Babylonian 
feel of this thing that I'm going to use a polymer clay uh, but clay would seem like a, a, a good you know a, a good material to make something like this for so what I've done is I've, I've made a uh, an equilateral triangle so each of those sides is 22 millimeters and I think that's about you know a nice size uh, to pick up in the hand and throw so first thing I'm going to do is get some of this femo and I'm going to sort of press it into a, a kind of kind of a handmade by eye tetrahedron as you will all know a tetrahedron is a, like a pyramid but with uh, three slopes I suppose uh, and so that means that there are four points and that I think seems to be the what you need for uh, a dice for the game of 20 squares so I've kind of got a you know reasonably regular tetrahedron there so what I'm going to do now is just put it against look at that almost fits put it against the, the equilateral triangle there then move it around and see if that one fits and all the time I've got to have whatever point is uh, pointing upwards sort of facing into the middle or just sort of rising out of the very center of the equilateral triangle there I put a mark on it, it seemed to be a bit, a little bit off maybe something like that okay so got there there check that side it's sticking to the paper a little bit but what can you do probably put cling film down I've got some Mesopotamian cling film in the kitchen no so that up out of there but I mean really all you need to do is get it as close as you can to where you want it with this because when you bake this stuff it goes as hard as a rock and you can file it and sand it so what I'm going to use is wet and dry paper because I think you get the nicer finish that way and then there'll be varnish but the point about these dice is that you need to have two points which are a different color you know, so there's two points there that are are not marked and two points here that will be marked so I'm going to pull off the corners those two corners there and I got some nice red Fimo I'll just take a little pinch of that and work that up so that it's nice and soft so I'm going to divide that in two as well. I don't think I need more than that. And I'm going to stick those little points on here. And really, just when when it gets sort of stuck to it, there's no moving it. It'll bake in with the rest of it, and it will be part of the same body. If you see what I mean. And the the dice that are actually found with the original board, they look very, very worn. I mean, they've been around for 5,000 years, so, but I mean, they look as if they were well used. And they're very rounded. They're very rounded at the points. I'm sh perhaps that was through use or whatever. And if they were clay, I suppose you would start knocking lumps off them, wouldn't you? If you're throwing them, they're hitting the floor. And so you can see uh, what I, I've got written here. Uh, 29 grams uh, and 14 centimetres. So 14 centimetres, because there are seven tokens uh, in, in black and seven tokens in white. <clears throat> so if I get if I get uh, 29 grams, I don't know why I chose 29 grams. That was just a bit arbitrary. Um, I had a go at this before and I, I arrived at 29 grams. 30 grams would be perfect, I suppose. Or even 25 grams, so something that you can remember. And then I've got to squeeze it and munge it all together. It starts out a bit hard, this stuff, but eventually it goes soft. I suppose if you want a stress reliever, this is kind of good stuff, isn't it? You end up being able to crack walnuts with your bare hands. Take this out of the way. And let's see. Now, I've got 14 centimeters marked here and here. Okay, so. Let's start pushing it around. I 
you don't have to be super accurate with this, I don't think. I mean, if you ever if you study the look of the, the actual clay tablets with all the rules written on or anything, any of those tablets, they're always a bit sort of, they're all unique. I often wonder whether that was the point as well, that the tablets were were unique, so they weren't sort of pressed into a mould or anything. They just looked as if they were you know, squeezed together by hand. Be like that sort of uh, that ball thing in uh, what was that? That Minority Report with uh, Tom Cruise, where each ball that was carved out of wood was u unique because of the grain of the wood. Until it reaches exactly 14 centimeters almost doesn't matter about the ruler marks on on it but that's that's it you can just stretch it the last bit okay and then I had actually marked off the two two centimeter marks anyway you can see them there just vaguely in there my knife and then cut one. Cut it into seven. Okay. All right. And once you've got the seven, just roll them into balls again. So if I've got a ball there, a little cannon ball, what I'm going to do is just squeeze it between my fingers until it's round about you know, four, maybe, maybe could be, I don't know, what is it, five millimeters thick? Really, it's the width that, that you're after, the, the diameter of the of the circle so you can imagine that I that, that if the if a Sumerian game maker is making something he, he'd make these out of clay too I must go to the British Museum one day when we're all free to move around and uh, and take a good look at the original so this could be made out of wood I think this is better because I think it's better because we can actually sort of um, inscribe into it something or other. So we, you know, if we get something that size there, I have this old bottle of ink that was uh, lying around in my stores for uh, must be thirty years or whatever, but it has a lovely um, kind of shape in the lid and a circle in the middle, which will become uh, useful. And I'm going to just press it into the center. Just make sure I get a good one there. I'm also going to put it in four other times because the original tokens have um, five marks on them. Seems to be a recurrent theme. See, it does kind of make it sort of slightly Bockety, but you know, ancient looking. But I'm also going to go further because I want to sort of make a little reference, a little nod to their cuneiform uh, uh, writing. Uh, even though I mean, I, I know nothing about cuneiform. Um, instead of a reed, I've got this lolly stick that I've cut straight across, and I'm going to uh, press in some cuneiform like marks. One, that's what Irving Finkel described to somebody how. It was done. So I've kind of got those sort of triangular marks and in, indentations in there now. I'm going to move this so that you can see it there. There. And just one more thing, because it, it's coin like uh, look, I'm just going to put in uh, some little indentations around the side with this little awl just for fun. Decoration. I like decorations and decorations within decorations. So there. We get there, you can see it there. And those little round, the five, the one in the center, two, three, four, five, those little points would be painted. Once this is uh, baked, it'll be rock hard, and you can paint that with acrylic and then just uh, put some varnish over the whole thing. So that's how I made the, the, the black tokens. And the white tokens will be made from a mixture of the, that female. This is kind of a bone color, this one. Uh, and that's pure white, so I'll probably mix the two of them together and do the same thing except in, in white and then reverse the color of the paint on the spots. That's it. So I'll make those. I think it looks suitably um, Sumerian. Yeah.
Here we go. So, here we go. So, there were the spots painted white. And there's the tetrahedron. What you can see, you can see some sort of uh, abrasion marks where I've uh, shaped it after the, after the baking. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is this what I think it is? Huh? What is this? What is this? I think what? I know. I think I know what this is. Oh, it's double wrapped. I'm very... I think I know what this is. I think. I oh think. This might be. Oh, wow! Oh, you made it! Yeah. yeah. You made this? Oh, wow! Yeah. You made this, yeah. Show, show it to the camera. Show it to the camera. Show it to the camera. What is it then, Matilda? What is it? Royal Game of Earth. It is Royal Game of Earth. 